Everything Jesus is a rock. 
My morning keeper. Rock. Go get it. Go get it. My soul provider. Somebody say Jesus. He's my rock. My rock is shelter. Oh, yes, he is. Somebody needs Jesus. Somebody needs Jesus. For the everyday. My Jesus. My Jesus. My Jesus. Lord, you're mighty. 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 Say, Lord, you're mighty. 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 Oh, Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. You set your glory above the heavens and the earth. When I We 
grateful we're just grateful Save me.
storm clouds through storms. And through dark clouds, through, through, through. The sun will. Some of us are going through some dark clouds right now, through storm clouds, through, through, through storm, and through some dark clouds. Just hold on a little while left. I need everybody, everybody that sings tenors, I need for you to sing this line. I, I, I'm great. Come on, church. Come on, church. So? I'm so grateful. Alto, and raise your hand if you sing alto in this place. Yeah, hey, sing it for him, alto. It's I am, I am, and I. I am grateful. Y'all better sing, sing, sing. So I am, I am. I am Everybody, everybody in this sanctuary, lift up your voice and help me say, I'm grateful. I'm grateful. So grateful. I'm grateful. Master, Master. Master to you. It may not have turned out like you wanted, but I'm still grateful. I'm still. Come on, come on. For the things that he allowed and for the things that he blocked, for what he allowed and what he blocked, I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful for the doors he opened. Hey, hey. And I'm grateful for the ones he closed. I'm grateful. God. 
His God had If you can't say nothing, can you just wave your hand in this place for the goodness of God, the favor of God that just rests upon our lives here in this sanctuary. That's all I got. I just got this. I just got this. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you. 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 That's all I got. Just thank you. Just I'm just grateful that. I'm grateful. Oh God, you're so worthy. Yeah, you're so worthy. That's probably one of my top three favorite gospel songs. The songwriter says, through dark clouds. But 
then he says, through storm clouds. Storms are going to come in your life. But he assures us that the sun is going to always shine through. Oh, God. I needed that this morning. Yeah, I needed that. To you in the sanctuary, those who are viewing virtually, God has been too good to us to hinder our praise. I don't know about you, but I've had some dark clouds that turned into some storm clouds. Preacher once said that it gets so bad sometimes you're standing in flood waters and the water is above your neck and you look up and tornadoes are falling out of the sky. When you thought it was bad and it couldn't get any worse, stuff can happen in your life that you can't even explain. Hmm. But somewhere in the midst of your pain, in the midst of your suffering, and all that you're going through, you still got to find the praise. I'm grateful. Yeah. What a praise. I'm grateful. Oh, bless his holy name. Yeah. And the song is, is apropos this morning for the message. Mm. And I'm just trying to get back to where I need to be to minister to you. Because I got a rear view mirror look at where he brought me from. Amen. Yeah. And every now and then it's good to check your rear view. You got it, Fuller. To see where it's brought you from. Yeah. I thank him today. so grateful. Mm, didn't have much. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I understand. I understand. And if I couldn't say a word, mm, I'd wave my hands. I'd rock side to side and, or pat my feet. But if, if that didn't work, I'd blink my eyes just to let him know I'm grateful. Bless his holy name. Father, we thank you today for the presence of your Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you. Now, Lord, as your man servant, I just ask that you have your way this morning. 
for the next few moments. Bless this message. Lord, let it be a seed planted in good soil for the furtherance of your kingdom. Have your way now. Just have your way. Use me as you see fit. As I decrease, you increase. Speak to these, your children, who've gathered in the sanctuary this morning. To those that are viewing virtually, speak to their hearts today. Have your way, God. Have your way. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I thank God for you this morning. And there's a word from the Lord I've been dealing with and going to be dealing with this series. Don't be afraid. I'm moving on in the series today. If you have your Bibles or you can retrieve the scripture electronically. We are going to Genesis 35. Looking at verses 16 through 19. Verses 16 through 19. Genesis 35, 16 through 19. When you get there, say amen. And I know you're with me. A word from God for God's people. Then they journeyed from Bethel. And when there was a, but a little distance to go to Ephra, Rachel labored in childbirth. And she had hard labor. Now it came to pass when she was in hard labor that the midwife said to her, do not fear. You will have this son also. And so it was as her soul was departing for she died that she called his name Benanah. But his father called him Benjamin. So Rachel died and was buried on the way to Ephra, that is Bethlehem. You may be seated. I, I want to talk about, in this series this morning, if I just have to tag a subject, I want to talk about your labor is not in vain. Your labor is not in vain. In the text, Rachel names this son Benanah, which means son of my sorrow. But Jacob called him Benjamin son of my right hand. So you better get a glimpse of how good God is. Let's consider the backstory this morning. Rachel is one of the wives of Jacob, the son of Isaac. Isaac is the son of Abraham, and Abraham is the one who God made a promise to in reference to the des his descendants being a great nation. I contend this morning, God always has a plan. This part of God's plan. It doesn't look good on the surface. But remember, his, his word cannot return to him Void. Jacob now has worked for 14 years for Laban for Rachel to be his wife. Jacob also had a wife who was 
Rachel's sister. Her name was Leah. And it's through these two sisters that 12 tribes of Israel are born. Here it is. If we go back prior to the text and we go back to about verse 9, God visits it's Jacob and he says this. Then God appeared to Jacob again when he came to Paddan Aram and blessed him. And God said to him, your name is Jacob. Your name shall not be called Jacob anymore, but Israel shall be your name. So his, he called his name Israel. Also, God said to him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall proceed from you, and kings shall come from your body. The land which I gave Abraham and Isaac I give to you, and to your descendants after you I give this land. Then God went up from him in a place where he had talked with him. Jacob is the father. He has ten sons by Leah and her maidservant, and Rachel is barren. Rachel must watch in her barrenness as Leah raises her sons for Jacob. The pain she felt becomes jealousy and envy, and Scripture reveals that Rachel went through 14 years of being barren. Leah had six sons, Reuben, Simon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, and one daughter, Deniah. And Leah's maidservant, Zipha, had two sons by Jacob. Gad and Asher. Rachel's maidservant, Bilbah, had two sons by Jacob, Dan and Naphtali. And can you imagine Rachel's frustration surrounded by children and none of them are yours when you wanted to have children? Rachel decides that she's going to take matters into her own hands. She decides to adopt her maidservant's two sons, thinking in her own mind, this will please God. But God had other plans for Rachel. I stopped by to tell somebody this morning, maybe you've been sitting in a situation and you've been watching God do things for others around you, and you decided to take some matters into your own hands. But just maybe, God has some other plans for you. Here it is. Scripture tells us in, in Genesis 30 and 22 that God remembered Rachel. And listened to her and enabled her to conceive. God opens Rachel's womb and she bore a son for Jacob. And his name was Joseph. But by the time we get to chapter 33, Jacob has heard from God and has received instructions to go to Bethel. Here it is in the text. He says to him to move on. They journeyed from Bethel. And, and when here they are, they are a little distance to go to Ephraim. And Rachel is laboring with childbirth. But the text says she has hard labor. To put it where you can get it, she was on the verge of a miscarriage. Something was wrong. Something was out of place. Something 
was not going the way that it should go in childbirth. But can I say this to you this morning as the first thing that I want you to hold on to? God is always in control. God is always in control. God's plan is greater than anything you can imagine. If you let him lead you, he will lead you in the right direction. In the context of our text this morning, Rachel desired children, 14 years of frustration, and she has one son, Joseph. But when she looks at Leah, Leah has six sons. Frustration. Her desire to have children for her husband, to the desire to give him more children, to fulfill her duties as a wife. But here we are, even in this moment, you got to remember God had a plan. Yeah. God remembered her desire for children. And he blessed her with children in his time. Not her time, his time. In the context of the text, she's about to give birth to her second child. If God was going to bless her with a child, it would have stopped with Joseph. But God had a plan. So now she's about to give birth to her second son. But in God's plan, Rachel didn't have an idea of the role that her sons would play. When we read the context of the Bible, Leah had six sons, but here it is. Rachel had two sons that made great impact. Oh, I, didn't, I wish I had time. God is always in control. Can I say to somebody today, you want it, but God said wait. You thought you deserved it, but God pushed your pause button. I, I, I wish I was talking to a real church this morning that understood that God's ways are not your ways. Some things you've desired in life, God said, hold on, wait a minute. You're not ready yet. I'm doing something with you. Can I take it a step further? God wants to birth something in you. It may not be a child that he wants to birth. But you got to be willing to wait on it. And anything that's worth having is worth waiting for. God is always in control. And because he's in control, it will be in his timing. Leah now on a journey goes into labor. What a time to go into labor when you're traveling. You don't have all the necessities that you may need for childbirth. But I contend today she had enough. God was in control. In accordance to the text, there was a midwife present. God, I wish you could get this. There's a midwife present. Midwives played a very important role during this biblical time. But what I love about the text is this woman knew her role. 
See, the second thing I want you to hold on to is things don't always turn out the way we expect. Leah's tra Rachel is traveling with Jacob, and, and it doesn't look like what she wanted it to look like. If she had a had her way, they would have made it to the destination. She could have had all the comfort, but she's on the road just a little bit outside of Ephraim, and now she goes into child labor. Not just child labor, but she goes into hard child labor. Something is out of order. Can you imagine where her spirit was, where her emotions were, what she was thinking about mentally, and all the stuff that was going through her mind? In, in her own mind, she could have been thinking that as much as I desire to give my husband another child, I'm on the verge of losing it. But there's a midwife there. Things don't always turn out the way we expect. I wonder how many of you have had some experiences in life when things didn't turn out the way you expected. Yeah. Let's remember in the text, here it is. God has remembered Rachel, he's listened to her. He knew her heart, and he blessed her in his own time. Rachel got the victory because God kept his promise. That's for somebody today. You're going to get the victory because God is going to keep his promise. Things don't always turn out the way we expect. But when you add God to the mix, things will turn out the way he wants them to turn out. His ways are not our ways. Here she is on the side of the road and about to give birth to the child. But here a midwife speaks. And God speaks through the midwife. According to the text, she says, do not fear. You will have this son also. But notice in what she says. She tells her, you're about to have a son. I contemplated, how did she know that this was going to be a son? But I, com I contend today, things don't always turn out the way we expect. When God is involved, he can put people in your life to speak into your life. To confirm his purpose for your life. Here she is. In hard child labor. Something is amiss. Something is wrong. Something is out of order. I wonder, is anybody here today have had some moments when things have been amiss in your life, when some things have been out of order, you pray to God, and it appears that God hasn't answered your prayers, but God shows up in a mysterious way to work some things out in your life. Third thing, and I'm done. Be grateful to God. That's a great segue from the song this morning. God let it fall in place. Be grateful to God. Here it is. Rachel was a part of God's master plan. It wasn't about her, but more about what God wanted to accomplish. God knows 
what you will have need of in this life. And God can put the right people in the right place at the right time in your life. He can put the right people in the right place at the right time in your life. In the text, Rachel didn't need her best friend. She didn't need family members. She didn't need the lady across the way. She needed a midwife. Yeah. In this moment, she didn't even need Jacob. Yeah, she needed somebody who was able to help her have this baby. The midwife says to her, you shall have this son. You will have this son. A prophetic word from someone who wasn't a prophet. Y'all missed it. You will have this son. God can put folks in place in your life to speak a prophetic word to you that he's already put a stamp of approval on. Look at the situation. On the side of a road, about to give birth to a child, going through hard labor, on the verge of a miscarriage, how can you guarantee me that I'm going to have this son? God spoke through the midwife. But notice this. The midwife didn't touch something. The midwife never told Rachel that you shall live and not die. Y'all missed it. The midwife was who she needed. She needed someone that could see beyond her complication and see God's desired outcome. All of us at times need somebody that can see beyond our situations and see God's desired outcome for our lives. The midwife didn't make promises. But she spoke of things that was certain that God had revealed to her. Do not fear. You'll have, you will have this son. She didn't tell Rachel she was going to live. Because Rachel's life was in God's hands. Oh God, I wish you'd get that. See, folk will try to speak to some stuff that's not in their hands. You got to be careful when folk start speaking into your life. Because some things are not in their hands. The midwife had to be a woman of God because she knew where to put a period. The period was you're going to have this son. But beyond the period, I can't tell you nothing else. I can't tell you about the outcome of your situation in your life. But I'm certain that you're going to give birth to this child. Don't fret. Don't fear. You will have this son. It was in God's plan. Well, can I tell you why it was in God's plan? Jacob had to have 12 sons. Joseph was the 11th son. But Benjamin is the 12th son. It had to come to pass. Can I tell you a little bit more why it had to come to pass? Because God had an ultimate plan. God had a 
master plan. And Benjamin was an intricate piece of the plan. It's from the lineage of Benjamin. Israel gets her first king. Saul is of the lineage of Benjamin. If Benjamin dies, there's no Saul. There's no first king according to God's master plan. Can I go a little bit farther into the New Testament? God had a master plan for the church in this lineage. Saul of Tarsus is of the lineage of Benjamin. Do you know who Saul of Tarsus is? We come to know him as Apostle Paul. One of the greatest patriarchs in the gospel. But if Benjamin dies, we don't get Paul that delivers the letters and writes to the churches. Y'all ain't caught on yet. God had a master plan. Your labor is not in vain. I see some of your faces. You're saying, Pastor, but Rachel gave birth to Benjamin and then she dies. But I contend this morning she got the victory. No longer did she need God on her side. For after birthing the 12 sons, she went to be with God. I don't understand. Y'all ain't clapping yet. That was your praise break. In that moment, Rachel gives life to a life that's a part of God's plan. But then her life takes on new meaning because she leaves this world behind to go be with God. What greater reward is there than being with God? Yeah. Your labor is not in vain. It was a part of God's master plan. Rachel, I know it's been 14 years. You've been watching Leah raise her sons and You've been agonizing. You've been tormented. You've been frustrated. You've almost allowed jealousy and envy to overtake you. But I heard your cry. And I opened your womb. I promised you children. I gave you Joseph. But now I got to complete my master plan. I'm going to trust you with Benjamin. I thank God today. That he has a master plan. God has a master plan for your life. But you ought to be grateful to God. God put some of the right people in your life in the right place when you needed them most. Oh, I didn't get enough amens. That was your shout point. And maybe... If he didn't put the right people in the right place at the right time in your life, I want to straighten you out on that. Because I don't want you to leave here confused. He did put the right person in your life at the right time in the right place. And his name is Jesus. God sent his son through 40 and two generations. A part of his master plan. That he would go to a hill called Calvary. Be nailed to an old rugged cross. To die a horrible death at the hands of Roman soldiers. He says, if I be lifted up, I'm going to draw all men unto me. He put the right person in the right place at the right time in your life. How I know because he cares. 
He cares for me. He cares for you. What he did that Friday up on Calvary's hill says he cares for us. He allowed his son to die one Friday about the ninth hour. Hung his head in the locks of his shoulders. Gave up the ghost. But I'm glad that's not how the story ends. He laid in a borrowed tomb. Friday night, all day Saturday, all night Saturday night. But early, early, one Sunday morning he rose. He rose with all power. Not some power, but all power in his hands. Can I say to you this morning, your labor is not in vain. Everything you're going through is not in vain. The pain in your life is not in vain. Your circumstance and situation is not in vain. For we serve a God. He's a way maker. How many of you know he's a way out of no way? How many of you know that he's a doctor in a sick room? How many of you know that he's a wheel in the middle of a wheel? How many of you know that he's a rose of Sharon? Mary's baby, the great I am. How many of you know that he'll make a way for you? He'll give you some help when you're in doubt. He'll come by and see about you. Wipe the tears from your eyes. Rock you to sleep in the cradle of his arms. How many of you know it today? Jesus. Jesus. There's something about the name of Jesus. Yeah, your labor is not in vain. I'm grateful. Oh, I love it. A mighty great for all that God has done for me. Yeah, your, your labor is not in vain. Mm. What a word. Fear not. You will have this son. God keeps his promise. Yeah. And we got to receive that today. Some of you may be going through some things. But I just stopped by to let you know. Help is on the way. Doesn't matter what it looks like. Doesn't matter what it feels like, but help is on the way. Just hold on a little while longer, and I promise you, he'll show up. And when he shows up, he shows out. This man named Jesus. He'll do it. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? He'll give you somewhere to live. Help you pay your bills. And when your load gets heavy, 
He'll help you bear your burdens in the heat of the day. Won't he do it? Yeah. Yeah. Won't he do it? Oh, he's able. He's able. Oh, my. Your labor is not in vain. Rachel didn't live to raise Benjamin, but she birthed him. Y'all missed it. She didn't live to raise him, but she birthed him. She completed her assignment. But God had a plan for Benjamin. Y'all didn't get it. Some of y'all raised some children that weren't yours. But God had a plan for those children. And you were a part of God's plan. You may not have had childbirth and labor pains, but you labored with a child. Oh, God, I wish I had some help in here today. God is able to do anything but fail. He'll make a way for you. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Your labor is not in vain. God has a master plan. I don't, I don't believe you really receive it. He has a master plan. It's bigger than your plan. It's bigger than your selfishness. It's bigger than your stout-heartedness. He has a master plan. Yeah. He has a master plan. She never would have thought that it would have came down to death. But the assignment was completed. She birthed Benjamin. It wasn't in God's master plan to raise him. She finished the assignment, and because of our narrow mindedness, we don't see the reward or the victory. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. She got the victory. She birthed the baby from baby to victory. Leah should have been jealous because she was left behind with six children. But here, Rachel births a baby and then goes for the victory. She won the race. She finished her course with joy. She heard a midwife that says, and you shall have this son also. But God had a master I want to tell somebody today. You are a part of God's master plan. You're a piece to the master's puzzle. You play an intricate part in what the master wants to do. Don't despise small be. 
beginning. Because God can bring out the greatness in all of us. All you got to do is trust and believe. God bless you this morning. I hope you receive that word. Your labor is not in vain. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. He's worthy. He's worthy. That's why this song this morning, I'm grateful. I'm mighty grateful for God allowing me to be a part of his master plan. I don't have to play a large role. I can just play a small role. But I still get the victory for being obedient. God bless you this morning. God keep you is my prayer. We are there. That's a word. Your labor is not in vain. So as we prepare our hearts this morning and we get ready to go, if you're here in the sanctuary and the Lord has moved on your heart because of what you're going through and you decided that there's a better way through Jesus Christ, if you believe that Jesus Christ lived, died, and rose again, and you want to accept him as your Savior, I want to meet you here after service and give you further instructions. Whether you come as a candidate for baptism or by letter or based on your Christian experience, I want to meet you here and give you further instructions. As we're still trying to you know, keep some social distance in place. For those who are viewing virtually this morning, if God has moved on your heart and you want to receive him as your Lord and Savior in a world of chaos and confusion, go to our Facebook page or to our website, get our email address, write us, and let us know the move that God made on your heart and and we'll be back in contact with you to tell you what your next step should be. God is still saving souls in 2023. We just have to trust him. We have to trust him. So as we get ready to go this morning, let's continue to believe God for the move of God in our society. We're living in some dark times. Some folk are doing some strange stuff in the times that we're living in. But I know the answer. And his name is Jesus. So let's continue to pray. Not only for our society, but for the culture. Because some people have some messed up ideologies. And it doesn't include Jesus Christ. They got a God, but it's not our God. But we need to introduce them to this God that we serve. We need to introduce them to this God that Rachel served. That even unto death, he says, I'll be with you to the end of the world. He's a promise keeper. How many of you know that this morning? He keeps his promise. Amen. Just a couple of announcements, and we're going to have prayer, and we're going to go. Uh, we are about to start our citywide tutorial program on November the 7th. It's going to meet on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 5.30 to 7.30, only two days a week. But it's a method to the madness. Tuesday gives us an opportunity to help them with work that they've received 
at the beginning of the week to prepare them as they finish the week. Thursday, we get a chance to help them as they prepare for test on Friday. Some of our children need help. We don't want to have that serious conversation. They're not performing on grade level, but we'll turn our heads to it. But I just believe if we open up the doors and do our part, God will do his part. And you noted that I said citywide. This is not just for children at Rock Santa. This is for any child in the city that a parent can get to us to get help two days out of the week that they might be able to be successful in the classroom. Y'all ought to give God a hand clap of praise for that. We've had, we've had people sign up to be tutors. I'm going to put the list back out here today. If you didn't sign up, if it's something you want to do, I want you to understand this. It's not mandatory. It's voluntary. It's a choice. If you are a teacher, educator, you have education and you want to share it, and you want to pick one of those days, pick the day that you can donate two hours. That's all. Two hours. Some people signed up for both days. To God be the glory. But if you can do one, then you've done your reasonable service. But if I can help somebody along the way, then my living has not been in vain. Can we help somebody? Then the church cannot be blamed if we make it available and they don't show up. And guess what? It's free. So if it's free and you don't show up, it's a sad case against a parent who wouldn't help their child to get free help. That's all I got to say about it. We're going to try to bless some children so they can go to the next level. We're going to do our part by making it available. And guess what? When we make it available, God's going to be pleased with us. He's not looking at our outcome. He's looking at our obedience because we did what we should have done to make it available. The other part falls on the parent who does not take advantage of the opportunity. But God will be pleased with us. Amen? Amen. So let's keep that in mind. It's coming. You're going to hear about it whether it's on the radio, whether you see it on Facebook or social media, it's going to be out there, but the date is November 7th. That is the first day from 5.30 to 7.30. If all of our hearts and minds are composed, let's stand where we are. It's been a good day. Somebody ought to tell God thank you. You ought to be telling him thank you for something he's done in your life. Just thank you. God has been good to all of us. And as we get ready to go, Let's remember we're a family. When a, one of us are going through, all of us are going through it. I believe that in the body of Christ, that as believers, we have to have a family mentality. That we love one another in spite of. That we are there for one another in spite of. Because we serve a great God. An awesome God. 
And in the family of God, there should be a love that covers a multitude of sin. So let's remember that we are family. Let's go before the Lord in prayer this morning. Father God, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for your hands reach from everlasting to everlasting. Lord, you're so much God that you can be in yesterday, today, and tomorrow at the same time. Lord, we thank you for mercy and grace. For Lord, you, you know what we have need of before we can ever ask. So this morning we come with a praise on our lips in our worship. For you've been mighty good to us. We're grateful. Mighty grateful. We thank you, God. Now, Lord, we ask that you watch over our sick and shut in. Those that are homebound and in hospital rooms and nursing homes, even our incarcerated. That, Lord, you reveal yourself to them like only you can. Father God, put a hedge around each one of us. Keep us in perfect peace. Bless every family that's represented in the sanctuary today. Bless their loved ones near and far. Bless those that are on virtual this morning, joining in for worship. Bless their family members. Keep them in perfect peace. Fathers, use us as instruments of your bidding in this week to come that we might bring glory to your name. That some man, woman, girl, or boy may hear the saving grace of Jesus Christ and have a desire to be saved. Bless our meager efforts today. For we are all fallible in our humanity. But Lord, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who died and shed his blood to wash away our sins. We thank you. Now, Lord, bless the gifts that will be brought this morning in the forms of tithes and offering. That, Lord God, that the ministry continue, that the building of the kingdom continues, that you multiply it so it can go farther than it could ever go on its own. Bless it now like only you can. Continue to have your way in our lives. Prepare a way for us. Give us safe passage as we leave the sanctuary in a virtual platform and we make it to our different destinations. Let us find things decent and in order. Just have your way, God. Now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us henceforth and forevermore. And all of God's children said, Amen. 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 Tell somebody you're happy to see them and you love them this morning. harvest service for first congregation it is not an installation service right. it's at three o'clock Doors will start the formal service will be at the announcement of the message uh, the pastor and so okay. it is not an installation okay service. yeah i understood that but yeah. i didn't know if you were inviting us to go yeah home. yeah we're invited he he invited us okay to come and yeah but i didn't want to interrupt you like you said yeah. i didn't 